you'll also be inspired by what John Francis is doing now and what he's done and what he's about to say right here on this stage. Everybody's been walking the planet. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to be here. Thanks very much for having me. And uh, I'm going to look at my watch so they don't have to start playing the drums to get me off the stage. But uh, I was born in North Philadelphia and uh, in 1946. So that makes me getting up there, 73 years old. Um, but I left Philadelphia and went to California. And it was in California that I saw an oil spill. And I gave up riding in motorized vehicles. It was so horrendous for me. And the reason I did is because I saw a bird die in Philadelphia on, the, on Pike Street where I live. Fell out of a tree and car rolled over it. And I wanted to take care of that bird. And just before I, I went to get it, the car rolled over the bird. And so I kind of I never forgot birds and that bird in particular. And um, I, I always had uh, something in me about nature. And thank God we lived in this city. Fairmount Park was like the huge, biggest city park in the world. And so I spent a lot of time out by Wissahickon Creek and in Fairmount Park and just had a great time and really got inundated with nature. So when I went to California, uh, I saw this oil spill. The birds were washing up on the shore and I just had to give up riding in cars when I saw that. And so for 17 years, I started walking and I walked around for 17 years. And soon after I started walking, I gave up speaking because I was arguing with people so many times about what one person could do. And I see there are a lot of one people here who have done a lot, you know. So, uh, and together we can do more. But I didn't speak for 17 years as I walked across the United States and I stopped and went to school and walked and worked and stopped and went to school. And I got this education. Um, and you know, I like that story about how the dreams, you dream something and you, you make a vision and, and things happen. Well, I, I would get to a school and I wouldn't have any money in my pocket. And you know, they would see me walking and not talking and they said, didn't you apply here two years ago? <laughs> you, said, you said you were going to be here in two years. And now here you are, and, you, and we ask you, you got, and you just go, because you don't have no money. But we'll figure stuff out. And they did. They figured how I could go to school in Montana, in Wisconsin, Oregon, until I could get my PhD. It was the 20th anniversary of Earth Day I started speaking after 17 years of walking across the country because I wanted to rob, remind myself that I was going to speak for the environment and the environment had changed for me from being just about pollution, endangered species, loss of habitat and all those kinds of things to be about people. Yeah, people, you, me, every one of us because Walking across the country, I met a lot of people. I mean, I'll tell you, I met people that if I knocked on somebody's door, my mother and father would say, no, don't go down to that, don't knock on that door. I knocked on those doors and people invited me in and I would open the door, I'd go, oh, what's the matter, John? Oh, John, you ain't never seen so many guns on the wall, have you? Oh, come on in, they're not for you. I would go in and people had Confederate flags hanging and guns on the wall and it called up other people on the phone. I was like, oh God, who are they calling? Remember that boy we seen on the road with the banjo? I'd have to play the banjo. That's right, he's here at our house. I go, oh God, who's coming over now? No, he can't come over to your house. Billy Bob's taking him to school tomorrow for show and tell. 
So I just had an experience, and when I got to the other side of the United States, the other side of the country, I realized, hey, listen, people are part of the environment. And I don't just mean we're just part of it, but I mean it's, we're so much a part of it that how we treat one another when we meet each other is going to manifest in the physical environment around us. And so environment for me became about human rights and civil rights and economic equity and gender equality and all the ways we relate to each other. And someone says, well, how would being kind to somebody help the physical environment? And I try to make this little, this kind of example that some guy is making widgets along the, the Delaware River. And it, the waste from those widgets that everybody likes is going into the water. That's called an externality because they don't have to pay for cleaning that water, they, that, that up. They just goes downstream. Downstream, the people are drinking that water and we, they get sick. They get sick. Now, if people were kind to each other, someone would say, well, look, they're getting sick downstream. Tell them to stop drinking that water. We'll stop throwing the stuff in the stream. And we have to figure out what's going on. And, and then we'll, we'll tell people they can drink the water again. But we're not going to keep polluting. That's what would happen if we were kind to one another. That's what has to change. That has to be the foundation of who we are. There's so much I hear, hear, heard here today that is just part of that. It's part of that. It's how we treat each other. But that doesn't mean we have to just kind of lay over and say, I mean, you know, there was that guy, what was his name? George Washington Carver. Yeah, I was thinking of George Washington Carver because I'm not going to tell you his whole story, but all I can say was that he was the only person that was not a president that had a memorial a national memorial made for him. And that was even before he died. He has a national park in Missouri. And presidents would all come to hear what George Washington Carver said about agriculture. So our, our touch, our, our heritage of how to grow things and how to be part of the, what's going on on the, on the planet and how we can feed ourselves, runs, the roots run very deep. And I just want to say one more thing. I just want to thank you very much for letting me be here um, today. I really appreciate that you are all here and uh, that we're from the same city, state. My time is up. The drums are going to start playing any minute. <laughs> thank you very much.